Okay, so this all started with, well, just a small track. Now, I just wanted to make a self-driving car, which can just, well, drive itself through a track, and quite quickly as well, as a slow one is pretty easy to make. So I'm just making a quick track so I can just test the, the car that I make in the future. Now, even making a car is, isn't exactly hard, but making a good car kind of is. It got to not flip over, and also, well, act normal, as this car didn't act very normal. But it was okay, as a starting point. Now, we need to kind of get this right so it's actually fit for the AI car. And this is a bit weird. It's definitely way too light, and it'd obviously be heavy if we actually improved it. But, yeah, I don't know if this will stick. It's also a bit uncontrollable because of its weight, as sometimes you drift, sometimes you don't. Which is just not something we need, as AI, well, a self-driving car could not really predict for its own, and yeah, it would not be the best. Anyway, I made the car longer, as I thought. That might help slightly, as it wasn't very, well, didn't have much good proportions. But it's looking alright. Now, I started doing stuff with sensors. I don't know if I explained this, but basically the way we're going to do this is it's going to sense the wall and it's going to turn accordingly. So if there's a wall to its right, it will turn left so it doesn't crash into the wall. Pretty simple stuff, but it's surprisingly hard to get right. As you can see, here's, it, here's its working action. But you suddenly enter these massive feedback loops where you just go back and forth until you crash into a wall. And these are bad, obviously. But, yeah. Now, an easy fix would generally just be able to make the track bigger, as that would help a lot. But, yeah. Now, we can also soften how much it turns, but it's actually looking okay. Except if you're going to a wall at speed, and especially if you're going straight into a wall, as both sensors will sense stuff at the same time, and you won't turn out of the way. Because realistically, it doesn't know which way is the right way, as the sensors, well, will detect anything, and if both sensors detect the same thing at the same time, then it won't move, which is pretty obvious. So it kind of just goes on to a crash course into a wall, which isn't very good. And there are many ways you can solve this. Now, yeah, no, oops. but we, now, there are many ways you can solve this. Now I also, I add thrusters to this thing, and I also painted both sides of the wall a different colour. So one side's white, one side's black. Now this is basically so we can basically detect each side of the wall independently with colour sensors. So, uh, uh, so only sense on one side doesn't sense black walls, and sense on the other side doesn't sense white walls, which are pretty, it's a pretty simple concept. It helps a lot. It'll stop us from getting into those kind of traps where we just, well, continually, well, just go into a wall. And the thrusters also help turn this thing. They don't, they don't actually make this thing go faster. But I also made it so the engine turns off whenever it senses something, which kind of so it slows down so it doesn't go straight into a wall. But it just doesn't help at all, so like I'll play a bit of it later on in like, later on cars. Now there are many things wrong with this prototype generally that it just can't go fast. And we're definitely gonna solve this later on though. But this is where I basically noticed that this track was tiny and you couldn't really test the car on it. So I started making loads of pieces. Now these pieces were around they were 64 by 64 um, blocks wide and they were basically were pieces to make it an even bigger track so I could just duplicate them or save them on the lift and spawn them back in to uh, well, well make the track and just weld them together and that's a pretty simple idea and it worked pretty well because it's a lot easier to make it that way because you don't ha have to make everything you can just duplicate some stuff which is generally just a nice thing to do now it was hard to make as it did take quite a long time but not as long as doing this all by hand, which is quite good. Now I also painted each bit of track, well each wall on the tracks different colours, like black and white, as that's just generally easy to remember. And it also gives, it makes the track look kinda cool. I also had made a ramp piece as well as some obviously straight pieces and yeah. As it would generally just make improve this thing a lot. And it generally made quite an interesting track in the end. Now although this is technically an AI car track, you can just use it as a track normally. It's not a bad track normally either. I quite like it. In fact, it was actually quite nice to drive around. But yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. So that's when I actually started making the track. 
Now, I it basically was just a combination of obviously up and downs and lefts and rights. Although actually, I only used left track, le left. I went left in the whole thing, which this simplifies this thing a lot, and also is quite useful later on. Now, one of these together wasn't exactly easy, and there are some better methods which you'll probably use later. But it was better than obviously making everything manually. So then I started making the actual car for this thing. Then I went first I went with this go kart thing. Now it was very light, which is a problem for cars, and it also the turning was very weird and too slow to actually obviously get around corners at full speed, which is what I wanted. So then I started on a, a new car complete. The old one the uh, AI car I didn't like, so I started over again. Now this is gonna be a driving drivable car for now. But soon it'll be an AI car. Now this was meant to actually look good as well, kind of, or not look too bad. And I think we really achieved that. Now it doesn't look like much right now, but it will look pretty good in a minute. Now one big problem was the wheels need lots of space rather than actually like being glitchy. So I did have to remove quite a lot of material from the front just so he had enough space to rotate properly. But I think it worked out fine in the end. Now this car isn't exactly like what I call amazing looking, but it does not look bad to be fair, and I think I'll s I think I'll I'll stick with it. Now of course this one isn't actually an AI one, it's just one you could drive yourself. Now I have to make a few modifications so you can it'd be an AI car. This thing is seriously good for driving. Like it can drift, but that's probably because we have metal flooring to be fair. But it can now get the whole little trap we've got currently. Except on the ramps. Ramps are very problematic. But we'll solve that problem later. But anyway, this thing can drift around corners and everything, and it does seem like a pretty good AI car. It's really reliable as well. It's never like weird or anything. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's also very small and obviously quite light, but somehow it still has enough friction to the ground to actually, well, be quite reliable and like flip over. But yeah, but we landed that, but yeah, we need to fix that somehow. Now I can't really be able to make, remake the ramp piece to make it so it doesn't happen, but I'm sure we can figure something out later. So I did try to add this uh, like rotating bar at the front of the vehicle to try that would kind of like rotate and just like instead of you like flying away when you hit a ramp, you just like go up it quite well. But that's not quite how it did. But anyway, we need to actually finish this track because even though I'm having quite a bit of fun, it is currently quite small, a bit too small. Now I used a mod called the Mod Pack to get this thing, which basically lets you fly. It's called an anti-gravity something, I don't know what it's actually called. But it's quite useful as I can now fly around the weldies rather than building scaffolding to actually like build stuff that's higher in the sky. And it's very good. Obviously it's mostly to help me build, it's not actually to help me but help the AI car. So this build still is unmodded. It's just generally one of those tools which just makes it a lot easier to do stuff. So and it's way better using it than having to spend like another like hour just building this by hand. But anyway, eventually I did finish the track and I'd do this, but I started to do this pretty weird thing. Not weird, I just had to connect two pieces of the track together. And it worked fine. I personally th think this thing's actually okay. But we need to actually add a back wall to it first, as so yeah, I had to do some welding together and like actually make it look okay. But yeah, it's not doing too badly. So anyway, as you can see it looks okay, it's definitely not the best, but does it matter? No. It, it's also quite big and it also goes on one continuous loop, which means we don't have to go back to the start of the track to test our AI card every time. But yeah, there's still, yeah, that was not meant to happen. There's still gravity, there's still anti-gravity for some reason. But anyway, yeah, now we're back to normal. And this thing works fine. 
the drifting's pretty good, and you can actually get some pretty satisfying drifts in this thing, which is really nice to add. But yeah, ramps still are still posing quite well, which is really quick, so I assume. This is what I'm going to do now. I'm basically just going to add some suspension on the front of the vehicle with a rotating bar. Now, I hope the rotating bar is going to take in some of the impact energy, maybe, but we'll see. Now, it does make this thing look a bit weird, but we can deal with it. I also added these weird pole things to the wheels, and I think they get rid of them, though, to make it so it didn't flip over as much. But I realised that, like, it doesn't flip over that much anyway, and this should realistically fix it. But anyway, let's have a proper test where we're actually, like, going to damp at full speed. I'm hoping it to work, but I don't know. That was very smooth, like, that was incredibly smooth, and we even landed fine. That was pretty good, that's all we need pretty much, as it, yeah, it was very quick. That was actually pretty good. It should stop, well, obviously the car from actually, well, yeah. Well, you know, we're actually flipping over. But anyway, here's where we're going to start on the AI car. Now, this is going to be weird. But I want the wheels to turn using engines and not controllers. You, 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 although you might use these controllers, engines are a lot quicker and you do have some more precision control, kind of, but it's like, generally quite hard to use. But they then just have way better response time than controllers, so I think it's worth it. Now basically what we do is, we, well obviously we're just turning the wheels just using engines instead of controllers, which is pretty simple. As before we use controllers, it wasn't the best. But using some simple systems, and also I used a special bar to link both the wheels, which basically means that they'll always stay at the same point. And it kind of works, kind of, not really. Keyword, kind of. Anyway, we'll see how this thing works. As you can see, the wheels turn, they're not exactly quick enough, but we can pretty easily change that just by making the, wheel, the engines on a higher well, speed. Now, the car is going very slowly at the moment, and that's why it's not, like, absolutely, like, flipping over on the ramps. But, yeah, we kind of want it to go faster, but I don't know if this will ever happen. There are a few flaws, like the sensors in me out to the Ted 20 blocks, which is a big problem, to be fair. But as you can see, it just doesn't have much reaction time. But the wheels are basically instant. Like, they generally... Yeah. I think it was a good idea to use electric engines, but they're very problematic, it's a problem, and they're very annoying to use. Now, the electric engines do this of missing a very good reaction time, but generally, they're just harder to use. But it is pretty good at going forwards on a, like, a straight plane. And I did make it so the electric engines kind of work like controls in the fact that they don't fully turn, so you don't basically make like 90 degree turns in like a second, so I kind of length them slightly. But anyway, now I tried making many self-driving cars, and they're generally quite hard to make. You just get that balance, and getting something to act human is hard, as it can't really react to its environment properly, which is annoying. But yeah, that's one of the big problems with it. If I use mods, I could probably do slightly better, as generally one of the big things is just not having a big enough reaction time because you can't sense that much, much further. And for them, it's basically I'm no longer sensing this and be like sensing further in the future as they know what turns to make and well, a lot sooner than they actually would, which would generally be just a lot better. But it's not really, it's like it's not really a problem. I think it's generally maybe the re bad thing about it is the way I made these AI cars. Now there are many ways to do it, and I've realised that maybe sensing a wall probably isn't the best idea, as we can't really increase the sensor range without using mods, which is, although it's a problem, it doesn't really matter. We could have probably done it slightly better, and I did have an idea for this at the end of the video, but it's slightly too late, and if I do do a part 2, it'll be in that. Now, generally, the obviously the problem with sensing is I had this new idea that basically Color basically turn based on what colour was underneath it. As in the middle of the track, there'd be no colour. But if it went further and further, the further and further away from the centre of the track, the darker the colour, which, so, it'd be light grey, then dark grey, then black, like that. And then the darker the colour, the more severe the turn it would make. And it basically self-corrects itself like that, which is pretty simple. And that also means it doesn't have to 
realistically has to be 20 blocks of wall to actually sense it and actually turn. As even though when you're going slowly, 20 blocks is actually quite far. If you're going fast, like I do in my car, then 20 blocks is around half a second of distance, and that's quite a bit. But anyway, I did paint uh, the track blue at uh, every turn. Because every turn is a left turn, I basically just made it turn left every time. It sends the colour blue. And if I didn't make it swing faster, I could just make it so it did this further away from the turn. It basically is a pretty simple system. But anyway. Now, although I was hoping to make a proper, uh, like, self-driving car that can probably, like, race, like, other self-driving cars, we're definitely not there yet. It can't even navigate its way around this track, which is embarrassing. But it's just one of the problems with this. This is my other idea, where we have a dark red at the outer, dark red, dark blue on the outer bit of the track, and light blue and light red on the inner bit, and then there's no colour. So right now it's in a place which it thinks is okay to be, but when it goes into light blue it'll make a small adjustment, whereas when it'll go into dark blue it'll make a big one, as then it realizes it needs to get into the middle of the track. And it's pretty simple. Now, obviously, as you can see, this over adjusts and yeah, it does not work very well. But it is an interesting idea which I can probably carry on if I do do a part two, but I'll see. I've also got, I there's something else I want to do before I do this again. And they'll probably be better to come back to this with an open mind. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.